Hey guys, so welcome to another open Akadawa group healing session. Lots of words. I haven't come up with a good way to abbreviate it. Anyway, um, so today I just wanted to run energy for y'all. And all that I want you to do is experiment with different mudras. Still intend to come into this sacred space with me. Just make it apparent in your mind and your heart that we are sharing a common space. You do that, you open up that belief, then energy can more easily come into your actual space. Okay. We'll just sit with that intention for a little while. It's just the first mudra that we're going to do. And then I want you to continue to hold the mudras that I show you to do and just breathe into the belly as much as possible. And that's all you have to do. You know, every once in a while you think, okay, I should, you know, remind myself that I'm in this common space with people. Every once in a while you remind yourself that you're paying attention to a much thicker, more palpable energy like the Akadua, the Akadua actually, um, than you're used to dealing with and used to syncing up your intention, syncing up your consciousness and your breath with. We have thoughts and we <laughs> breathe, you know, or <sighs> this is a natural thing that we do. Our consciousness influences our breath and our breath influences our consciousness. So obviously we have to make that connection. When you're trying to breathe with something like the Akadua, it almost feels unnatural because it's so thick and you're just like, what is this stuff? Um, but all you have to do is remind yourself that the Akadua is flowing into you, breathing through your belly, filling up that space like a balloon as much as possible. And that's it. And, and again, just every once in a while, remind yourself of the different things coming to the, the same sacred spaces, each other and all of that. Um, yeah, you get it. Obviously, you don't want your mind to be bouncing around like crazy all the time, but I'm not trying to say that I expect everyone to be like an expert meditator when we're doing this kind of stuff. All you need to do is sit and relax and breathe, all right? And for this session, I'm going to show you some different mudras. Okay, so just put your hands like this first out in front of the chest. I always see in yoga people doing like this and like that hurts. <laughs> it hurts my wrists, you know, it just seems unnecessarily tense. I've seen a lot all the way out here. See, I've seen a lot of, um, not a lot of, but I have seen other systems do it like this. And you can concentrate at the tips of your fingers, your eyes, at the tips of your fingers. And just very slowly and gently fill up that belly like a balloon. can close your eyes too, if you want to. This is not a religious thing. It does come from actually connecting and concentrating different lines of energy that run through the body. And this brings them all together. When we do any type of mudra, and this is a 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 cool one that I do a lot. Um, we alter those lines of energy that are running through our bodies. And as we do that, different combinations of those energies happen. They're filtered through our bodies in a different way or concentrated through our bodies in different ways. And that creates its own type of energy that we're working with. If you use the 
Taoist model, then you have the five faces of chi corresponding to the five different fingers on each hand. So this would be earth, metal, fire, wood, and water. So those just represent different types of energies that move through your body and different types of chi. When we bring the hands and the fingers together, we're concentrating all of those types of energy into our bodies. And where our consciousness goes is where we're going to be concentrating that energy. So if you are familiar with the uh, internal alchemical arts, then you will have heard the term Dantian, and you'll know what I'm talking about. And that space sort of in the belly, all the way inside in your core. If you don't, it doesn't matter, then just breathe through your belly button. That's what we're sinking our consciousness into, breathing there. <clears throat> and you can do that the whole time. This is the first, well, actually the second mudra that I want you to work with. This is called the diamond mudra. Basically, you just take one hand and that and put them together just gently so that, you know, the finger is like right about here, middle finger. So it's relatively open. And then touch the tips of the thumbs together. Put that right in front of your belly so that the belly button is in the middle of that circle. You just want to gently hold it there as you move it up and down a little bit, you know, just kind of get a feel for where it feels best. Straight spine, straight neck, shoulders back and down. And breathe into the belly. Now I'm just going to start running energy. Occasionally remind yourself that we're in the space together. Occasionally remind yourself that the Akandawa is flowing into you. And then return to your breath. Now the uh, 
the Taoist conception is it, of it, or the Chinese Taoist conception of it, is that earth chi represents the culmination of the other four types of chi. So it's kind of all of them combined. So when we're doing this, we're connecting the two earth fingers, thumbs, and allowing all the energies to sort of pool together. This also allows energy to move and mix more than some mudras. The other one that I do to start is like this. You grab one thumb, wrap the other hand around. But this can be, feel kind of constrictive mm -hmm. and tight. Uh, so I'm working with this one right now. After we've done earth, which is what we're doing, we're doing this mostly, is moving on to the other four fingers. So after earth comes metal. So the most simple mudra you've probably ever seen, thumbs and first fingers. And just hold these, whatever feels comfortable for you. You can have them out here, front of the chest a little bit. You can have them like this, opposite seats. And sometimes if you're doing this, if you're getting used to the flow of energy, you might feel the pole shift and then you want to kind of flip them. Always trying to center the top hand, whichever, whichever hand it is, with the heart and the bottom hand with the stomach. You can even just set them on your legs, on your lap, on your knees. Go with whatever is comfortable. And again, I'm going to start running energy. And we're going to move to the pinky finger, which is water, which is next in the phase of chi moving from one form to another. The opposite um, destructive path of energy, it, it's, it follows a different course. Some weird, interesting little thing about uh, Taoism. Not only are the five phases of chi sort of constantly becoming each other, but there is a cycle of becoming and a cycle of decoming, I guess, of deconstruction. So construction and deconstruction, one thing that builds up and one thing that tears down. So each of those energies have an energy that helps it grow. And they also have an opposite energy, which destroys it or they destroy each other. So moving on to the pinky finger, this one is difficult for me in my right hand. Really to stretch that thing out, and make it be all right. Uh, but yeah. It doesn't matter if you can't really make the thing and your, your fingers are all because oh, reasons, then um, it's okay to just do that. Good. 
together just like that. And reading my nails. So also it might help to put the thumb in front of or on top of the other nail instead of the tip. You can't do that. It might hurt or it's too difficult and try it that way. And this is water and I'm going to start running energy. I'm sort of letting my daemon or higher self or the Akandawa itself decide which energies to send to you while you're holding these mudras. So if this is you connecting with and getting in touch with the flow of earth chi through your body, then the form or variety of the Akadwa that it used was obsidian. For metal, it went to atmospheric. For water, which we're doing now, it is oceanic, not surprisingly. Also, I find that they sort of tend to combine. Moving on to wood, ring finger. And the Akadawa variety is volcanic. And we're going to move on to fire. And the variety is solar.
that completes the cycle. But I want us to go back to Earth and this because it's a good opening and closing mudra back in front of the belly and breathe. And to coalesce all of your thoughts, all of your sensations into the lower Dong Chien. You're not even you're not thinking about that point, you are thinking from that point. Consciousness can go anywhere. Breathing in all that energy. <clears throat> We're going to do some closing Qigong moves. So hands palm up in the lap. We're going to move up the sides right here. I'm actually touching my body as I'm moving up, just very gently. And as they get here, they naturally flip around and then facing up. Palms still facing up all the way above the head. They flip this way and we come back down to the initial position. When they come up, they do this and then they do this <laughs> and come up down. Hands in the lap, kind of push your belly forward. Straight spine, straight neck. Breathe in. Breathe out. Up to the sides. Just think of it as one movement with no catches. And synchronize your breathing with the movement. Hands on the sides with the out the belly with the middle fingers pointing towards the belly button. Breathe into that space. And back to this mudra for a couple minutes. You really want to concentrate the energy when you're trying this.
Okay, and that's all we're gonna to do today. You can always do that movement to close down this one, sweeping down and up the sides and then down the front of the body, always coalescing in the lower Dantian or center of the belly. Um, and the one that I showed you, and then closing mudras to concentrate that energy. If you do a lot of energy work and you have been gathering all of that chi or using the akagawa and whatnot, and then you don't do sort of closing and balancing and concentrating techniques at the end of it, then you can feel very scattered, all right? So it is as much getting rid of energy as it is calling in energy or activating energy, using energy that is at your disposal, like a source, like the Akadua. And it is as much that as learning to circulate it within and around your body and also concentrate it down into certain points. That's all internal alchemy is, using the mind to do that, the consciousness, intention, etc. So that's what we're doing, that's what we're learning, and it's, you know, high-level stuff, but you got to be introduced to it somehow. And when um, somebody tells you, who's teaching you how to meditate to, you know, visualize this or focus on that, that's what they're doing. You're trying to train them to use their minds their own consciousnesses uh, to make energy move in a certain way. And then when you have those things set in place, you can experience altered states of consciousness, trance states, uh, higher forms of consciousness, meditative states, equanimity, all that kind of stuff. So that's where we're getting, and that's what the Akadua is for and not just for physical healing, laying out of hands, Reiki type stuff, you know. So I want to make that clear. My approach has always been the internal arts. And that's how I use the Akadawa. It's like an extra layer. And it also can merge things, bridge things, so that energy runs more easily between them, like two energy points within or outside of the body. Um, so there's so much stuff. Um, if you want to know more, then consider joining my Patreon, which has uh, a full training course on the Akadua, and I'm covering all of these topics in detail. Okay, thank you.